Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, welcome back to the channel where it's time today for the first outing ever in the UK with my Zenvo TSRS. We are of course back from the SF90 winter tour. We've been all the way around Europe. I've dropped that car off already at HRO and Ferrari in Hatfield for its annual service. That car's already a year old, but it's time to drive this for the very first time here in England. Now, of course, the car has been here for a couple of months since we went over to Denmark to bring it back. It was technically here as well at the Goodwood Festival of Speed prior to me taking delivery, but I've only ever driven my TSRS in Denmark on multiple occasions, the collection day and also recently, plus in Croatia on the Supercar Owners Circle event, which was fabulous. So it's time to go out for a drive, enjoy some nice countryside roads, and probably later take it on into central London to watch the chaos unfold. I'm quite excited to get behind the wheel. I've been saving it for an occasion worthy of taking the car out. Today is that day, let's go. Firstly, check these out. The latest socks from Heel Tread. My TSRS spec in a pair of socks, just like we did before with the GT Black Series and with the Senna, and you can grab those right now. I'm actually wearing a pair, of course, as well for the drive out today. Link and information about those down below. But as we often say with the Shmimobiles, I try and drive the cars or get them moving at least every two months. This car has now been back in the UK for two months, but every single day that I have been here in England since this car returned back, it has been raining. And while I'm not necessarily about never driving a car if it's raining, I didn't want my first drive out in this to be in the rain. Now, knowing my luck, it's going to rain later on, but at least for now, it's just overcast. The roads are dry because it's winter, it's cold, it's very valuable, and I need to be very, very careful with it each and every time. But it's time today to go and experience it. So we're gonna head out, drive the same loop effectively that I drove with the blue car when that had come to visit. And remember here in the garage, when the blue TSRS arrived, we didn't have any of that. We didn't have, I think, even the car lifts in place. And some of the cars certainly weren't yet part of the collection, but that was, the day inside when I was like, one day this thing's going to come. Obviously looking stunning in the Lila Palamore with the lime grant accents. But yeah, I've got the key in my pocket, which by the way, if you've never seen it, is this super cool Thor's hammer, obviously in the same colors anodized to match with the interior details and the accents. And yeah, it's Zenvo time. And even though I've owned it for six months or so now, this still feels a little bit unreal. This isn't quite like, it's like one of those pinch moments. Like, is this really my car that we're gonna go and drive? Let's get it started, let's head out. Step one, unplug the C-Tech charger, which plugs in just there. It's very clever, pop that away. We will be super careful today with the carbon fiber wheels, but this car is left-hand drive, as I explained a few times in the build-up to purchasing it. The reason for going left-hand drive was that I expected most of my mileage to be in left-hand drive countries, Oh, that's a narrow miss on the Amira just parked there. And well, that's exactly what it's done. 100% of the driving to date has been in left-hand drive countries and it's going to be heading very far and wide as well in the future. So to start the Zenvo, you pop the key inside here, give it a press and everything starts to wake up, get powered and we'll get it started in a second. <laughs> The first stop has been at a petrol station and the attention of this thing in normal traffic, my word. Anyway, we've got a full tank now. Get this started and break off into gear. Obviously we've got the tablet in the center, which is telling me that it's not been backed up because obviously I haven't used it, uh, but out we go. And it's just crazy to drive this car here, to just be driving in normal traffic, thank you to the person who just let us out. It's like you see everybody's faces as they go, what? Just like, what is that? You think the Ford GT or the Senna is like an alien on the road? This is something completely else. This is something that's just ridiculous. Utterly, utterly, utterly ludicrous. As we now crawl through some streets, go find some country lanes, and then afterwards, after we've enjoyed and just got back into the swing of things and the feel for this, we're gonna head into town. If we can do so before the rain comes, we're gonna go and just see some reactions to this car. Being out now on some slightly more open roads, and I've got the car in the regular IQ power setting and the normal gearbox, but just as we meander down the road, 
I can't even begin to give it full power because it's so freaking ludicrous. Now I have some buttons here and the right side is the gearbox. When I press that it goes from road mode to race mode and in race mode the shifts are lightning fast but if you touch the throttle or if you don't sorry if you lift off like you instinctively do in a single clutch car that's when it gets a little bit messy and here you just stay on the throttle and it gives you that spurt which catapults you forwards i mean you can drop it down to second gear the sounds in here are just absurd and then foot on the throttle i i, I just can't a split second on the throttle and we end up in silly numbers immediately it's like and i've described it this way a few times it's like taking an event door and injecting even more steroids into it that shove in the back that really hard kick as we head down these lanes just being reminded of the ludicrousness of this thing i mean it's not a car that you're going to drive all the time and that's one of the reasons why i haven't brought it out until now is because i wanted to be able to take it out when i was not under any time pressure when it wasn't going to be pouring with rain when i could just enjoy it and take it all in and um discover a bit more of what it's about this thing is so quick like before gt this car is just not made for the english countryside lanes they are so bumpy and rough opens up a little bit here and on all of those shifts you've got the fireballs behind got the sounds of the supercharger oh that was a big pothole i had to avoid in fact that's also a big pothole i have to avoid these are not the right roads for this kind of car oh it's so aggressive and raw and you just have to grab it you just have to grab it and try and drive the thing and i say try because you can't use i mean we're running on normal obviously regular pump petrol which means we've got the 1177 horsepower as opposed to the full 200 or so more than that that you'd have if you're running on the 85 and just driving around here trying to get my head around what i'm doing and what i'm driving and understanding the car a little bit more as i probably head down the worst possible lane it's a little bit wide for this kind of thing a little bit wide a little bit bumpy it needs to be out on the roads like we have done in denmark and croatia and in places where it's just slightly less chopped up than this it's very cliche to always talk about it but english country lanes are very scenic but very hard to drive down in a car that's got this much performance because simply it's just bumping and clattering around but this is unreal this is the absolute dream to come out onto a faster dual carriageway i i can't believe it honestly driving this car i just cannot believe that this is actually my hypercar as it opens up yeah, i'm not gonna go any more than that <laughs> this guy's on it i'm gonna let him go <laughs> oh my goodness oh my goodness this is a very famous site the hatfield tunnel somewhere where i have driven regularly in fact even with the factory blue tsrs i just it, you can't go like foot flat in here you just can't do it now obviously it makes a lot of flames it makes fewer flames than it used to but one of the funny things is with the uh rear view mirror or the rear view camera you'd actually see the flames licking up under that obviously we're not going to right now because it's nowhere nearly warm enough but the shifts are ballistic the shifts are absolutely ballistic and you see every single head of every person you go past just craning to look at the car just to see what it is because people have no idea what this is there are only a handful of zenvos and this is the only uk one the only one in the uk at this time and obviously the only one here right now because none of the other cars i believe are currently in the united kingdom at all i i, I don't know what to say well we're now on the roads in towards london um which is going to be hopefully a gentle cruise i keep hearing stories of hypercars in the city right now by hypercars we are talking an aston martin valkyrie from switzerland that's apparently here somewhere there's a bugatti veyron i believe around today as well and now apparently there's a zenvo as well so i don't know what we're going to find but either way it's going to be fascinating to see and we might have some bonus hypercars to top off the day we're about five miles from central london now but this route in actually just on the right here is that a cullinan that is a cullinan hiding there 
as it makes its way through. What I was going to say though, this whole route into central London has now become a 20 miles per hour zone. This road used to be a 30 until literally a couple of days ago, and it's now a 20 the whole way in. This is 20 miles per hour. It's so slow and tedious. That's 50 kilometers down to 30 kilometers on a road that, I mean, to be honest, it never felt uncomfortable at 30, I'm not gonna lie, but London is really closing up to cars in so many ways. The sound cameras that you have in the center that we're gonna have to be conscious of today, of course, all of the speed cameras everywhere, all of the traffic restrictions. Oh, there was an Urus that just passed us anyway. There was a Lamborghini Urus there, you'll have to take my word for it. But uh, people have been seeing this Valkyrie driving around, so I'm intrigued if we're gonna spot that. What I can tell you is that this is so boring. This is such a boring way to drive in. Everybody sees this and is like, what is that? <laughs> like, what is it? <laughs> the amount of cameras that come out and people that look and just stare as we go past, looking at this thing like, what is that? It's one of those like, just, just roll past people and you'll see it as we go. You see people just being like, <laughs> eyes locked on. <laughs> There's no hiding in something like this. There's just, and there's even, I can see here a cyclist following me in the mirror with a, a camera, because why not, hey? <laughs> the kid just said, what car is that? Dad said, Lamborghini. I guess in many ways it doesn't look like a Lamborghini just because it's edgy and dramatic and crazy, right? I think the fact is that unless you're really into cars, you're not gonna know a Zenvo. In a few years time, you will definitely know Zenvo, but at the moment, they are very obviously unknown. It's completely bespoke. Yeah, being filmed there. <laughs> being filmed pretty much everywhere. It'd actually be quite fun to take everyone's clips and make like a whole video out of the clips of people who film you driving past. Now we're crossing Oxford Street. It's so busy around here. <laughs> I don't know how much you see because I think people mostly grab their camera phones once you've gone past them. It's just, I, I don't know. Yeah, I just heard a kid screaming and shouting, look. Oh my gosh. If I was a kid and I saw this driving down the road, I would be like, that is the coolest spaceship thing ever. That is not normal. That's not something that you should normally see. I don't know how much you see on the video, but I just see every face, mouth, like what? Hey, we're going past the Speciale. Nice black with gold wheels. Very cool car. Had a lot of fun driving a Speciale not that long ago. Out with the Audrain Museum in Rhode Island in the US, where we shall be returning. Well, we'll be returning to the US very, very soon, in fact. This is Grosvenor Square in London, literally through the center of London. Many, many, many years spent spotting crazy hypercars around here, and now driving one of my crazy hypercars around here, which is some weird dream. Mulsanne. Just lots of nice cars. We're now in car spotter territory. We've been spotted in the first like actual spots of this car in central London. Very slowly, carefully and easily does this. So we swing around here, DB11, past the dealers. This is obviously HRO and Ferrari. Well, Bentley first, but Ferrari where I have purchased some of my cars. What's inside right now? 296, a set of Fiorano. In the middle, we have an 812, and then on the right, we have a 488 Spider. One R on a new Phantom in Salamanca Blue. That's nice. Plate and car combo, absolutely on point. Very, very, very smart. Okay, there are a lot of people out today with cameras as we very slowly crawl by. <laughs> this is the place to be. Wow. So many confused faces. Faces of like, what is that car? We did actually just have somebody saying, what the uh, F is that? <laughs> Which was bang on cue, to be completely honest. Everyone else is just confused and surprised and cameras pop out everywhere. I'm gonna pull up somewhere up here, actually. Just go with the flow a little bit and see where, where it all takes us, to be honest. God, it's a monster of a pothole to go around. This thing has a very, very firm ride for these kind of bumps and potholes and things in central London. <laughs> Just everybody gets their phones out. Every camera phone. We have Ferraris aplenty. There's an F12 just there. And then up ahead is a 430 Spider. 
headphones. <laughs> this works for the moment. Oh look, a GT2 RS. We're in some good company by stopping here. Carefully does it with carbon fiber wheels. Very, very carefully does it. <laughs> I've never been so paranoid in my life. Okay, we'll stop for the moment. We'll just have a little chill out for the second, take it in. Look at those grills, i7. <laughs> Massive scary things. Whew, relax, park. That's really nice. 901.2 Speedster with heritage livery. As you can see, it's got pretty busy here. My car is tucked in there somewhere, <laughs> but we're surrounded by a lot of people and soon to be joined by something fairly epic coming as well. Everyone's deaf now. <laughs> Phantom passes by. Turbo S passes by from Switzerland. I gather the Valkyrie and LaFerrari that were out earlier have been parked up now. I'm sure there'll be more to follow though. Well, the GT2 RS there is just departing. A lot of people here waiting for me to get this started. So let me come and step in here, climb in, carefully does it, and get this started up. Key in here. Press it down, wait a second. He's just gone that way. The rear view mirror view is quite amusing. And then press the button. Perfect, all right. It is crazy, crazy, crazy busy. We're actually gonna go meet up with somebody in just a second to get some cool photos. One pink Ford Transit Custom MSRT spotted. <laughs> Brad's out in the van. <laughs> Our team van. <laughs> Funny. We're gonna go this way, because there's a nice spot. It's a little bit quieter just down here. It won't be quiet for long though, I suspect, but we'll do what we can do. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> Check that out. The bug has arrived. I'm gonna park around the corner. That's cool. That's very, very cool. What a pairing. Bug and Zenvo together in London. At last. Thankfully it's not raining. We thought it would by now, but this pair together look really, really, really cool. Two very, very different type of cars. Two very cool cars to see together. <laughs> Well, that's not a sight you see every day. The first time that I've taken my Zenvo out, it is part of a hypercar photo shoot with the Bugatti Veyron here. The owner has brought that out. We've just parked them back to back alongside here. Although sadly, it is now starting to drizzle. A little bit of rain is falling, unfortunately, but hey, such is life. Nonetheless, two incredible cars, very different hypercars. Obviously quad turbo, eight liter W16, 5.8 liter twin supercharged V8 in the Zenvo. Very, very different engines. The rain is actually getting heavier very, very fast. So we might well have to uh, make a move before we know it. See how this goes. Well, the rain just started coming down a whole lot more dramatically than it was, which is not good for anyone. Um, it is what it is. <laughs> no garage queens here. The car will survive. I just need to be extra careful. More of other people, to be honest, uh, out on the road. That's always the panic in these kind of circumstances, but on we go. Oh, there went the bug. <laughs> Just crossed over in front. Maybe I can follow the bug. That would be quite fun. Let's squeeze out and go uh, see if we can go the same direction. Check that out. Zenvo following Bugatti on the streets of London in the rain, as you do. <laughs> with so many people running around like mad. Oh, this got unpleasant so fast. This is not how I intended to spend the end of my afternoon. <laughs> oh no, what are we doing? Obviously Bugatti's also left-hand drive, but they have to be left-hand drive. They're all left-hand drive. Whereas this car, I volunteered for left-hand drive. They could have done it right if I wished. If I had chosen to have a right-hand drive car, I could have had a right-hand drive car. But there are a couple of things really with that, with this market. Um, 
if you're going to drive mostly left-hand drive it makes sense to have a left-hand drive if you're ever even vaguely contemplating selling the car down the line obviously the advantage of a global market with left-hand drive as opposed to uk only or a couple of countries that can be right-hand drive but basically uk only um <laughs> this is so cozy and uh, nerve-wracking but hey where there's a will there's a way to squeeze down here Oh, there's that Heritage Speedster from earlier, followed by a Vanquish, followed by the 430 Spider. What a trio. <laughs> what a trio. Thank you to the people who have kindly made space for us to squeeze through. Oh my. Uh, is that a Solar Beam G-Wagon? That's cool. Solar Beam G-Wagon for the win. Oh, this is cool as well. Uh, Tributo Ferrari. 595. Love it. That's cool. Or is that the dealer's edition? Can't quite tell. Either way, it's cool. Um, the S-Class pulled out behind the bug. Oh, this is going to be slow and steady then. This is going to be a slow and steady drive back out of London. This is not going to be a uh, particularly crazy ride from here on in, I suspect. This thing is just extreme. Extreme is the way to describe it raw, visceral, and about the experience. <sighs> Out onto Park Lane, behind a Bugatti Veyron, in my Zenvo. This takes me back, because I must have followed countless bugs up and down this road over the years. Cycling in my V8 Vantage, in my R8, in my McLaren 12C, in my 650S, in you name it. But this time around, I'm doing it in a Zenvo, and that doesn't quite make sense. Like, these two cars are, I mean, bo both full-on hypercars. Full-fat hypercars, driving through London. <laughs> what is going on? Oh my gosh, I wish it was slightly earlier in the day, and it was dry, and a little brighter but you know what as experiences go this is pretty crazy this is a rather surreal moment right at this moment in time this is not normal we shall say farewell then as we make our way in a slightly different direction this is just funny <laughs> this is so a little bit slippy sound of the supercharger or superchargers I should say I missed the days of this being a 40 mile per hour zone it's now 20 very very slow and steady does it We've jumped ahead, we're back at the Schmuseum, it was dark, it was wet, the traffic is chaotic. On a weekend in London, in the rain, is the worst possible time to be driving a car like this. Complete disaster. However, given that we're here, it's quite interesting actually how you open the front clamp of this, you pull the lever just inside in the footwell, then you effectively have this whole piece that goes forwards. Um, the right technique to get this correct is to pull it from the front and then it lifts up and then you hinge that forward and then that's where you have your luggage space so you can fit some stuff in there i'm sure zenvo could create some fitted bags or something if that's what i would have liked to go for i've just got my rucksack backpack tucked in there at the moment lift that out and then to close it kind of interesting process here because you have to latch it effectively on each side and then push it into place now if you've got the complete knack of it as the guys at the factory were showing me then they don't even go around each side. But I've got a little bit more learning to get that right. For now, it's just that, and we're done. And then of course, coming back around here, plugging this back in, which we left in place. It's a little rubber cap over the top. That plugs in there, and we're done. It's gonna need a wash again. It's gonna need another little clean and tidy up. But the first drive in the Zenvo, the first outing, the first time Stretching the legs of this thing, having a little drive with it, taking it down the same lanes that I drove with the blue TSRS, and then turning up in central London. The long story short of this is that this is not the right car to take into a busy city centre. It needs 
more room to run. It needs more space. It needs to be flowing. It doesn't want to sit and stop and go traffic. And that has been a complete and total disaster today. Do not forget, of course, the heel tread TSRS socks. Information about those down below. They have just come out. You can grab those right now. I've been wearing mine very comfortably all day today. And of course, these also have TSRS number four, because of course mine is TSRS number four of the cars in the build run. So the Zenvo has had its first drive here in the UK. It's been short and sweet, but there's a lot more to come because the plans with this car are gonna be taking it back abroad again before too long. We've got petrol hedonism underground in Wembley in April. We also have a pretty cool run out with it. And then summer will come around before we know it. And there's gonna be some really, really big stuff for this. I want to take it out each time for things that I want to enjoy doing with it to get the car driving today with 20 mile an hour speed limits was more about just letting lots of people see the car. Loads of people came out. So thank you to everybody who popped along, grabbed some photos and all of that, which you might've seen on social media. But I guess that is it for this time. Thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.